of the Lord in your life. That God himself will see the progress we are making spiritually as a result of studying the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the study of the Word of God. And we pray tonight that as we study, you open our eyes to see, our hearts to understand, and to receive completely everything you reveal to us in your Word tonight in Jesus' name. Keep us awake, Lord. After such a busy day for the most of the people, we know that tiredness will come to our body. But Lord, we pray you keep us at a large so that we can get everything you reveal in your word in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that through this word, we'll grow spiritually. Then we'll be moving closer and closer to the holiness and the godliness that you want everyone to have in readiness preparation for the rapture the taking away of the people of god to glory in jesus name lord we pray that tonight you teach us open to us the page of the scripture and show us the things that we didn't know before thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray thank you very much you can get seated we come back to matthew chapter 6 and in Matthew chapter 6, we're still in the Sermon on the Mount. In the Sermon on the Mount, this section is a section of prayer. And we'll be looking at the Lord's Prayer. And I've told you a number of times, it's the disciples' prayer. I've revealed to you this is the believer's prayer. We've learned together that this is the prayer for the family of God, the children of God. Because it begins by saying, a father. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, honored be your name, glorified be your name, exalted is your name. Thy kingdom come. There's a kingdom that comes today, the spiritual kingdom, when Christ the King enters into your heart. And then he establishes his kingdom of peace, his kind of kingdom of righteousness in your heart. And then there is what we call the eschatological kingdom. That is the kingdom to come in the future at the end of time. And it is those who enter into the kingdom now by being born again that will be in the kingdom on that final day thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Satan will like his will to be done. And Satan is going up and down and to and fro. And he wants to force people. He doesn't give people the free choice. He wants to force people to do his will. And then we even ourselves, human beings, want to do our will. We want to play God. We want to make ourselves God. And exalt our will above the will of the Almighty. But Jesus said when you become a member of the family of God, this is the prayer you pray. Thy will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven. And then he begins uh, to tell us how to pray for our daily needs in the body, the soul, as well as the spirit. He says, give us this day our daily bread and then he says forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and in particular in fact in that area of prayer forgive us our debts our sins our trespasses our transgressions as we forgive those who offend us he then amplifies it he explains it further that if we want that forgiveness of the lord we must also practice that forgiveness ourselves if we receive the grace of God, we must become gracious. If we have the manifestation of the mercy of God in our lives, we must be merciful ourselves. If we receive of the oppression 
and the demonstration of the love of God, we must reveal and show that love to all the people too. If we have got the forgiveness of the Lord, we too must show that forgiveness. That's why it says in verse 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Then he tells us the other side of the coin. And this is what gives the lie to the people that say they believe in eternal security. You know, there are people that say once you are saved, you are forever saved. Whatever you do, you may have hatred in your heart or bitterness in your mind or malice in your relationship with the saved. It doesn't really matter. You are saved, you are forever saved. You might be cruel and wicked. They say it doesn't matter. Didn't you raise up your hand at the crusade field? Didn't you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? After you've given your life to the Lord, they say once a child of God, always a child of God. Now whatever you do, it doesn't matter. I'm sure you understand that all these preachers will not know more than Jesus Christ himself. He is a great teacher come from heaven. He is a great prophet, and the word of the Lord comes from him. He is a great Savior. How can these people know more than our Lord and Savior? Here is what Jesus Christ said in verse 15. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Which is telling us that when you receive the forgiveness of the Lord, then you ought to show that forgiveness, compassion, love, and mercy unto all the people to you. Now we come to the conclusion of the prayer today. This is Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation. We will still pray to the Heavenly Father. Now our sins have been forgiven because we have prayed already in verse, in verse 12. And the Lord has answered that. He has taken the guilt away. He has taken the condemnation away. He has turned us around. He has transformed our lives. And now we go on in the joy of sins forgiven. No condemnation now to those that walk in the spirit. Who are no more in the flesh. Sins are forgiven. Then he says, but not all danger is over. The danger is not all over. That's why he says now, we will pray after that forgiveness. We will we'll pray after that salvation. We will pray after that reconciliation with God. We will pray after the grace of God, the love of God, has been manifested unto us. Lord, thank you because of forgiving our sins. Now we have another prayer as a follow up of that forgiveness, as a follow up of that reconciliation with God. Here is a prayer and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Well, the, the believer is asking for divine guidance, and the believer is asking for protection through this prayer. Now, I need to tell you this that after we come out of Egypt, we need to give our hearts, our hands to the Lord and say, just lead us on. Coming out of Egypt is not the end of the journey. It's the beginning of the journey. Receiving forgiveness is not the edge of the Christian life. It's the beginning of the Christian life. Forgiveness, love, relationship is not the edge of our interaction with the Lord. It's the very beginning. That's why after that forgiveness, now what follows is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You see that part of the prayer has two parts. First part, lead us not into temptation. Second part, deliver us from evil. You know, there are people who don't understand that. They say, once we are not led to temptation, then the second part, the feel, is no more necessary. Once you pray, lead us not into temptation, and the Lord is leading you, and the Lord is guiding you, and you are following after the first steps of the Lord, and He's leading and leading and leading and guiding and guiding and guiding, and He doesn't lead you into temptation. Why are you still praying the other part and deliver us from evil? We have an illustration in Exodus. Exodus, I'm reading from chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13 is after chapter 12. You remember chapter 12 when He slew the lamb and He applied the blood. 
And the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. They pass from death unto life. Forgiveness was given to them free of charge. And after that forgiveness now, they came out of the land of Egypt. Can I just remind you once again, coming out of Egypt is not the end. It's the very beginning. Now the Lord needed to lead them and lead them and guide them from that point on until they will get to the land of appointment. That is the promised land. We're looking at Exodus chapter 13 verse 17. Exodus 13, verse 17, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God let them not throw the way of the land of the Philistines. Lead us not into temptation. They came out of the land of Egypt, and it shows how God led them. And it says, He let them not. Through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, but God said, Lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. You know, the lesson from there. The Lord did not lead them in the way the one that was even faster and quicker, so that they will not see war, they will not see trial, they will not see affliction, they will not see temptation, and then they will be so discouraged, and then they go back to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up earnest out of the land of Egypt. Look at verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day and in, the, in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. That's the leading of the Lord, the guardians of the Lord. After they came out of the land of Egypt, lead us not into temptation. After forgiveness, after salvation, after reconciliation. After conversion, after we come into the family of God, after we escape the corruption that is in the world through laws, after that deliverance, salvation, conversion, then we are praying, lead us not into temptation. And now it says in verse 21, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to keep them light, to go by day and by night. In verse 22, He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. That's the leading of the Lord. I, I, I'm trying to illustrate for you what Jesus said. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now the Lord was leading them. You can see that. Look at what follows in chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 9. But the Egyptians pursued after them. The Lord was leading them. He was not leading them into trial, into affliction, into, into difficulty, but the Egyptians pursued after them. It's because of this, we have to join those two parts of the prayer. On the one hand, lead us not into temptation. On the other hand, but evil may still come. The devil may pursue. The Egyptians may pursue. The enemies may pursue. Therefore, we join with that first part of the prayer. Deliver us from evil. In verse 9, all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army overtook them and camping by the sea beside Piha heroes. Before Baal seven. And then it tells us in verse 10, in verse 10 it says, And uh, when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord their God. And so, the leading us not into temptation is not the end. We must also join with the prayer, deliver us from these Egyptians. Deliver us from this devil. Deliver us from the evil one. And then you look at that same chapter 14, verse 30. Thus the Lord saved 
the children of the children did this Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So you see the two parts. Number one, the first part, uh, lead us not into temptation. And then the second part, but deliver us from evil. In fact, as you look at the history of the, of the children of Israel, and you look at their testimony as to what the Lord has done for them, you'll find them always remembering the two paths. Lead us not into temptation, into trial, and then deliver us from evil, from the evil one. Deuteronomy chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're looking at verse 7. But the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. The Lord thy God bringeth thee into. He brought them out, but coming out was not the end. He must bring them into. Verse 10, when thou hast, he says, when thou art sitting and thou art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good which he has given. Beware lest thou forget. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Which God, it tells us in verse 15, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness. The great and terrible wilderness. Lead us not into temptation. Yes, he was leading them. And he was not leading them into temptation. But then they were going through a terrible wilderness. And in that wilderness, there were dangers. That's why they needed to join with that first part of the prayer. And deliver us from evil. Wherein were fairy serpents, deliver us from them. And scorpions, deliver us from them. And drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water? Out of the rock of flint, Jeremiah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 6, Jeremiah chapter 2. Reading from verse 6. We're following through on why we have those two parts of the prayer. Very necessary. First part, lead us not into temptation. Second part, but deliver us from evil. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 6, neither said they, where is the Lord that brought thee, that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? Out of the land of Egypt. That's just, uh, you know, the beginning. And that led us through. That led us through. The Lord is leading. After you become born again, that's why those who are born again, you don't just stay in your house. The Lord wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. That's the reason why you join with the people of God, so that by the light of His Word, by the direction of His Spirit, by the counseling of those who know more than you, He'll be leading you. And then it says, He led us through the wilderness and through a land of deserts and of peace. Because of those peace, that's why we join the second part of the prayer and deliver us from evil. Through a land of drought and of the shadow of death. Through a land that no man passes through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country. That's the goal. That's the goal. Until we get to that land of promise, the plentiful country, we don't stop. To eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. Isaiah chapter 63. In Isaiah chapter 63, I'm reading from verse 11. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea, which the shepherds uh, were the shepherds of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him that led them? that led them. You see, when he brings you out, he wants to keep on leading you. That's the reason why it's not just enough to say, I'm born again. Praise the Lord, you are born again. But he needs to lead you. 
I'm converted. Praise the Lord, you are converted. But he wants you to give him your hand and your heart so that he can lead you. I've come out of Egypt. I've come out of the world. Praise the Lord, you have come out of Egypt and you have come out of the world. But he wants to lead you. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It says in that verse 12 that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble.